Hi, Doc. So this one's a little longer one from Harry Benjamin. Hi, Dr. Ren and Dave. Huge fan of the show. My great, very grateful that you both have come together to help everyone who may be confused with TRT. So are we. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> You're so clear and concise with explaining everything. It's honestly a godsend. I'm happy to hear that because as I, I want to go on and on and feel like I say too much sometimes, but <laughs> I'm good to hear. Thank you. So my question is a simple one. Does a Reminex have a big negative effect on bone mineral density? I only need to take a very small amount, 0 0.125 milligrams of Remedex every other day. I use 50 milliliters of testosterone propionate every other day as my preferred ester. I've read a lot of things about how negatively Remedex affects body, uh, excuse me, uh, bone mineral density. However, I'm not clear as to whether it's the Arimidex that causes this or it's a result of people taking too much Arimidex, sending their estrogen too low, which causes this indirectly. Yes, save me the, the, the answer, <laughs> spot on. Uh, it also tends to, I'm just gonna side, uh, segue here, to um, lower your HDL, not because of the Arimidex itself, but because of the lowering too much of estrogen. Uh, that comes up a lot too. So he says uh, further, um, if you dose the Arimidex correctly, keeping your estrogen in a healthy range, does that avoid any negative effects on uh, BMD? Uh, I'm just starting to worry that if I'm going to be taking Arimidex every other day for the rest of my life, that I could be causing myself harm. Also, there's a lot of talk on how Arimidex negatively affects your mind, depression, anxiety, etc. Is this true or is this, again, an indirect effect from sending your estrogen too low? I'm sure you prescribe it. I'm, I'm sure as you prescribe it, you must be confident in it being safe from a physical and mental perspective. I just want to understand Remedex and its negative effects a bit more. Again, thank you both for creating the series. Kind regards, Harry Benjamin. Okay, so he just saved you a lot of my going on and on about it from the first <laughs> part, okay? I will only add to that that when it comes to the, the uh, effects on your mind, as he puts it, that one is going to be much more individualized, as so much of this is. But I've seen people... And most people do have issues with excess estrogen causing irascibility and moodiness, right? So uh, sending it too low though can also cause issues. I've seen it, and it doesn't happen that often, but I've seen it effectuate a change in libido for the worse and actually frank erectile dysfunction because of a lack of sensitivity in the genitalia because of it going too low. But that's the rarity, not the norm. Of course, excess suppression of estrogen can also cause um, what seems like almost flu-like symptoms, achy joints, not from where you took a spill on your motorcycle when you were younger, but sort of all over. Again, it's kind of like you know, pre-flu, but that's also relatively rare, uh, less rare than the first thing I mentioned about libido and, and, and sensitivity. But as, it, as far as it af affecting you know, anxiety, possible, Again, just like with some women that when their estrogen goes too low from natural causes, meaning you know, premenopause and menopause, it can create palpitations, hot flashes, and that can cause anxiety, just those, but maybe even more directly, there's a, there's a link with, with anxiety. But it's not the norm, and certainly not uh, from the, um, like in the prior gentleman's question, Steve's question about, you know, a drop from uh, you know, within normal limits around 28, 29 to, you know, eight, it would, it would typically be something much more drastic than that. But again, everybody's different. It's a possibility, but I wouldn't be looking for that. I, I wouldn't, you know, when I give my, I call it my monologue, when I see initial patients, that's not part of my monologue. It's something to watch for if we, and we, I tend to be aggressive with estrogen suppression in, in my practice. It, it's not something I say, Hey, look out for this, be on, be on the lookout. Um, so I don't think the, the mental part is something that I would be looking for. I wouldn't be uh, concerned about any of this stuff. I think he, he's uh, spot on. There are some people on the internet whose name will, names will remain uh, unmentioned. Some very well-meaning, 
Uh, for example, I will mention uh, Nelson Virgil, who uh, is great in the space, um, a good friend of mine. Uh, he's been a big proponent about not being so strict with estrogen control as I and some other doctors may be, but for very different reasons. I mean, he's very interested in, 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 in health, uh, physical health, and he sends me an article every now and then, and I'll send him one back about the pros <laughs> and cons about controlling estrogen. And I've always said, and I, I did this with uh, another gentleman whose name I won't mention, because I'm, I'm, I just don't want, it's all, you know, I don't want to mention uh, Voldemort, you know, <laughs> um, uh, who I think more irresponsibly mentions the, the uh, not using any estrogen control, which I think is nuts. Uh, um, but uh, the, for me, it boils down to, look, on the one hand, I already mentioned what happens if you oversuppress it, which typically doesn't doesn't happen that often those side effects the flip side of that is if you under suppress it you run the risk of water retention fat retention uh, the moodiness or acidity but we know that certain estrogens uh, activate the genes which all men carry for prostate cancer that's not worth it right. in my opinion so I tell everyone hey you know you do what you want to do and and you know, my ideal sweet spot has always been about, and we've gone over this a bunch of times, 15 to 20 picograms per milliliter of estradiol sensitive. And uh, that seems to do well for most people. It also tends to lend itself to a better ratio of, of free T to total T, which is a nice little uh, boon, you know. Uh, as long as you keep it under 21, 22, it seems to keep that free T level up, lowering your SHBG, your sex hormone binding level. But I've had uh, guys complain, either, hey, part of the week I lose my libido because it might be dropping too low mm -hmm. for a time period there, or hey, doc, you know, I like with my strongman guys, you know, the guys that you can throw the keg over the wall and stuff. Like, doc, man, I, I'm 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 doing what you asked me to do, but my 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 tendons seem to be sore, my joints are sore, and we float their E2, your estradiol sensitive up to say. 25 to 30 in either one of those cases, libido or, or strength, and they go, oh, man, problem solved. Okay, well, it's still within normal limits. Yeah. Depends on what the normal limits are, you know, depending upon the lab. In other words, you know, it's 39, 35, depending on the lab. Uh, but we don't go over that. Uh, and and, and uh, so, you know, in that regard, we, we, we think we're still playing it safe. And there's guys out there. I mean, Dr. Lipschultz. As far as I know, he doesn't subscribe to my ideal sweet spot of 15 to 20, but he still subscribes to keeping it within normal limits. And I think that's a safer approach for whatever that's worth. Again, in the end, Nelson might be the one that's right. But but again, I don't know how I would ever, with the current state of knowledge being what it is, be able to, to come to a, 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 an agreement with that because of what we know about prostate cancer. That That's... Until that changes, then I'm going to stick with my recommendations. Uh, you may indeed feel better, and he may see that with 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 uh, the guys that he works with that tell him, "Hey, you know, when I when I float it up a little bit higher than the, than that, I than what you know Rand says, I do feel better." But you know, we may not know until 20 years from now or more. Or, you know, the, okay, did that though end up robbing Peter to pay Paul in the, in the form of prostate cancer earlier than expected? Yeah. So again, until that, until we get a definitive answer there, that's my position. Doesn't mean I'm right, but uh, that's what I would say to to this gentleman here. I, I wouldn't uh, worry about the Arimidex, and certainly the way he's doing it. It sounds like it's all where he wants it to be. Keep doing it. Nice. Yeah.